first grade is Miss Beck here. Today we are going to be learning about the art of the face. Oh yeah. We're from makeup, from the gurus to the big screen. So check it out. You can do makeup and what is it? So what can it be? Well, it's typically cosmetic products such as foundation, mascara, eyeliner, prosthetics. So things that get built up onto the face such as special effects or when we create, see our favorite characters like Gamora, um, they have stuff built onto their skin to help bring that character to life. Or you can, you can even be using objects like flowers or rhinestones. And who can do it? Anyone with the tools and anyone with the vision. Anyone can participate in being um, a makeup artist. So let's talk careers in makeup. Our first uh, our first career is a makeup designer. This job requires you to work hand in hand with a team of directors, actors, and stylists. You need the skills of research, of communication, and crafting. Here you can see this makeup artist is bringing one of our favorite characters, Nebula, to life using an airbrush tool and using various prosthetics to help bring that brushed metal effect to life. So this person had to work hand in hand with the director and with the, with the actress Karen and with um, the other people on set and Stan Lee, the creator, to figure out what would this character look like? What colors would be included? What types of effects does he need to think about as he's adding it onto this, um, this actress and all that good stuff. So it takes a whole team to bring this one character to life and you can make a big living off of it if you're making it for the movies and all that good stuff, right? A cosmetologist. Cosmetologists are experts at applying treatment, therapy, and procedures for daily needs. They fill various roles such as spas, salons, hotels, or beauty marketing. So cosmetologists take care of us on an everyday basis, help us fe help us stay healthy, help us stay clean, help us feel good, and all that good stuff. They are experts at knowing how our body works and how things react in the body. Also have a special effects artist. These artists are so cool. This job requires you to bring your imagination to life and turn actors into their characters of creatures, aliens, and monsters using makeup and prosthetics. So they build stuff up. Maybe, for example, you're thinking of a zombie movie. They help bring those zombies to life using all the various tools that they have in their gear to make it look realistic, right? Because you can edit certain things, but I think it's really cool that there are people who specialize in making those effects as real as possible. So here we have the cosmetic scientist. This job combines science and creativity. In this job, you create the formula of the beauty products and ensure that it's safe for us to use. This can be for makeup or other skincare products that keep us healthy. One example is recently in the beauty industry, there is a huge turnover in how we create red. So the reason that red is so important is that there is a specific um, ingredient that used to be used which is called carmide and this was made from ground up beetles. Now in order to make it vegan friendly, in order to save that population of beetles, well, they found and created a synthetic version of that that works similarly. You also have editorial and advertising. There are many paths in this career from photographing and selling products to writing and editing articles. You may be using art, other art mediums such as photography and graphic design to help sell your products. So here you can see down at the, as you can see down here, this is an ad from Milk Makeup. They um, are selling you this product through different types of people, right? There's a wide range of diversity between all the people that are using their products. Um, they are also using the skills of photography in order to make a really interesting shot that makes you want to buy the makeup. Um, and they probably wrote an article along to go with it to tell you about why you should buy this makeup and from this brand. So there's a lot of different ways that makeup is used on a daily basis. And it's not just for the daily putting on my face to feel really good about myself, but you can use makeup in so many different ways. The earliest forms of makeup can be traced back to the Egyptians. They used natural materials such as brown insects, clay, copper, and ash. They were most known for coal, which helped deflect the harsh sun and was believed to ward off evil. This was worn by both men, women, and children, and it was said to be protective and help basically protect their eyes from that really harsh sun that was just directly going onto the sand. And here you can see here is even an ancient coal kit that they would use to apply. In India, henna has been a practice for centuries as a hair dye and as for mendi. Mendi is an art form in which complex designs are drawn onto the hands and feet with a paste made from the henna plant, and it's often part of the marriage tradition. 
Here you can see the tips of the fingers are dyed with this henna and then they've created these patterns. This is a really long process that takes like up to a day to do. And what they do is they apply this henna, let it sit. And after it sits, it releases that chemical and leaves a mark on the skin. And it's perfectly healthy, perfectly safe. Um, but that's what leaves the impression behind. In Chinese culture, painting the fingernails started around 3000 BCE. So that was over was over 23,000 years ago. So they used it to establish class. The royalty class would wear gold or silver and lower class citizens were forbidden from wearing bright colors. In Japanese culture, geishas are still famous today for their iconic makeup look. They originally used lipstick from crushed safflower petals to paint their eyebrows and lips and rice powder for their face. To become a geisha actually takes really extensive training and practice and it is a really important part of the culture. So that was a very brief look at makeup through different cultures throughout history. Well today, makeup is for everyone. There have been companies that are striving to make it inclusive for all. From everyday wear to cosplay, movies and TVs and artistic creations, makeup is used to just bring the artist's visions to life. Amagus, I'm a makeup artist from Buenos Aires, been working in makeup for six years, and I specialize in editorial makeup. My name is Ryan Burke. I'm a New York-based makeup artist. My makeup style is three-dimensional, architectural, and conceptual. Hey, my name is Mashudat. I am a creative director and a makeup artist. My work can be a bit versatile. It's editorial, it's dimensional, but the one thing I will say my style is, is fun. Okay, look what we have here. You have one hour to create a look inspired by the following image. Dun, dun, dun. It's the starry night, Vincent Van Gogh. Your looks will be photographed in an editorial photo shoot. Ooh, I like the editorial, I'm ready. <laughs> Tannon makeup is to moisturize everything when you start. If it's not moisturized, everything is going to look dry. It's important to massage moisturizer into the face. It helps with blood circulation and you can feel the bones and see the structure of the model's face. So I'm just gonna do your brows first. I can't even concentrate without like decent eyebrows, so I figured. First thing. Yeah, let me do that. Frames then... the face. Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna glue down the model's eyebrows. I'm using Prosade for this. Sometimes I glue down with a glue stick, but since I'm using a cream-based makeup over it, the cream can activate the glue and it will lift. So this glue won't do that. I don't normally use airbrush, but since I only have an hour to do this look, this is a faster way to get a nice, even base too. Now we will start with eyes. I'm gonna use a makeup with water base. I really like it, it's like painting. I usually use it on editorials. The painting inspired me especially about colors. So I'm gonna use the colors and try to use the forms Van Gogh used. I don't wanna be like excessively perfect because the painting is kinda not perfect. Now I'm gonna use a brush to splatter water-based makeup on top of this base to give the effect of the stars. Apart from using this effect for a paint splatter, this is also used to do freckles. Okay, what I'm doing right now is smoking out her eyelid with the same lipstick that I used on her. It's RNG to keep going with the sky vibes. I'm gonna come back in with some brighter orange shadows. I seen a little bit of yellows in the picture, so I was like, why not throw some yellow under there? My style really comes from mixing different mediums. When I began doing makeup, I didn't know how, so I used a lot of paper, glitter, glued them on the face to sort of create a look instead of just strictly makeup. So while I've learned a lot of makeup techniques, I still incorporate that into my style. Now I'm gonna put mascara. Always curl the lashes before using mascara because you can damage the lashes. Everything was out of my comfort zone completely. So this was a first for me, but I also really liked being able to do what I know best. I love glitter. Glitter is my cousin. So I'm glad it all came together. Looks oh my amazing. God. 
I wanted to incorporate the sort of impressionistic style of the painting into the base of the face. And then the rhythm of the swirly stars in the sky, I wanted to use the wire to show that. So this to me was a great experience. It was really cool to see how many different variations of this model, Nicole, like to see her in every different form, and every different element, and to see how her face carried it. I think this is pretty dope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it was I think that's so, so cool. much fun to see how different we can make yeah. everything. Yeah, and like just to see that we're really all different forms of artists and it's really cool. So I'm happy that we did this. Yeah, yeah. it was so good. It was a really nice experience. Yeah. Nicole, Nicole, you're the MVP. I hope she's got a yeah. nice face mask. <laughs> Hello first graders for today's assignment, guess what? You are going to let your imagination run wild and not just create any design, but create a design for your art teachers. Oh yeah, we want you to reimagine our faces. As you can see, we're gonna have all the pictures of the art teachers here. You can pick any art teacher. If you want to make multiple designs, if you tap the three dots here in the corner, you can duplicate the page. We're gonna edit. I'm going to show my sample here on slide seven. All right, so, hmm, what do I wanna do? Well, I love Pokemon, so maybe I should make myself into a Pokemon. Oh, it's gonna be really hard to pick. Um, you guys already probably seen my Pokemon <laughs> cursor. Um, while I think about it, let me go through the tools in Seesaw. We've used these a few times before, but a review is always good. If you tap on any of the tools twice, you can change the size of your tool. If you look on the slider bar here on the right, you can change the colors. Um, the marker tool is a really good tool for making big, bold um, shapes that fill everything in, right? This is gonna cover. But if you use the highlighting tool, you can still kind of see underneath. So this might be a good effect for like, um, subtle effects that wouldn't necessarily be covering up the whole skin, but there you go. If you make a mistake, you can use the arrows to go back. The marker, the highlighter, the glow pen tool might be good for some small effects. And you can always use the pencil tool as well. Once you are done with your design, don't forget to tap that green check for approval. We can't wait to see what you come up with. Have fun and may the arts be with you.